Welcome back to War of the Ring, where I have great news! I screwed up last episode, but I'm going to fix it this time. And it's very good news for the free peoples. I drew some tiles out of the bag because there was a successful hunt in the last episode. Uh, and it looked as though Strider bit it. But, reviewing the rules, <laughs> I was using the rules when the Fellowship was on the Mordor track, which they were not. So we're going to quickly review those. We're going to look at the tiles. And we're going to look at the rules. Uh, because it's good news. Alright, let's take a look at the tiles as we drew them. And I'll explain what I did wrong and uh, how we're going to correct it. Alright, these were the three tiles we drew out. Now, we did ha have a hunt for the ring. Uh, and it was basically... Um, a success. We had one success. We rolled one six. I think it was a six and a one. I can't remember exactly and I didn't review the footage but I do know the shadow player was a successful hunt for the ring. Now I drew the eye token and this means they were are revealed. We know that. That's not a problem. But what I said about the eye was that they take two damage because there were two uh, eye dice in the hunt for the ring box. That is not correct. What you use if they are not on the Mordor track is you use the number of successes. And that would be one. Now I thought it was two. So I was going to randomly take a character from the Fellowship. We have Legolas, Boromir, and Aragorn. And I randomly drew one and it happened to be Aragorn and we got rid of him. Well, I wouldn't have done that because this is only one corruption damage. And so I wouldn't have done it. We would have just use the Horn of Gondor at this time, which prevented one damage. Then we drew one, and I uh, would have just used the Corruption Track for one, and then we drew this tile, one revealed again. So the bottom line is, we had a total of three Corruption damage, and I got rid of Strider thinking this one was two, but it wasn't. So we're not going to get rid of Strider. He's still the leader of the Fellowship, which is awesome. We need him to be that. Uh, but we are going to have two Corruption on the track instead of one. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. And that will fix our problem for right now. So let's go ahead to the uh, tracker and put them up to two Corruption. And what the Corruption actually represents is Frodo using the ring. Uh, to hide himself and of course every time he uses the ring he becomes a little more uh, corrupted by it uh, and so that is where we are now okay that fixes it sorry about that um, I hope I left a uh, note or comment in the last episode this is all good stuff it's all good for us and now unfortunately though it is the uh, shadow player's turn we can also immediately go to the mordor track because when the fellowship is in the moranon uh, or minas morgul they can opt to be on the uh, mordor track and you don't have to be hidden to go onto the mordor track but you have to be hidden to move on it so let's go ahead and do that another kind of correction here all right, so the Fellowship was revealed to be in the Moranon. So they have made it into Mordor, which is, which is I guess, good, <laughs> as long as we don't take enough corruption to lose the game. So we are going to place Frodo, Sam, and the Fellowship on the little Mordor track here in Gorgorath. Now, they're not considered anywhere. They are on the track to get towards the Crack of Doom. That's the end story. So even if there's Nazgul in here or whatever... Um, and we do no, no longer hunt for the ring in Mordor either. It's just an automatic, every time we try to move, we automatically pull a tile out of the bag. Which reminds me, now that we are on the Mordor track, we are going to be placing in the bag all of the special tiles that have been collected. And any eye tile as well is going to go into the bag. So these five tiles are going to go into the bag. Uh, to draw tiles out. So I'm going to do that off camera. <sighs> then uh, we are going to take a look. It is the Shadow Player's turn first for this episode. It's back to them. They've got a lot of dice. We're revealed, which is not great. Uh, but we do still have Strider as leader. He can hide the Fellowship 
and we have one die remaining and he can use any die to do it so all is not lost i thought we were done at the end of the last episode but we're not not yet so let's go ahead we're gonna put these in the bag and we're gonna have the shadow player take their turn all right the four shadow dice remaining for the rest of this turn are two muster armies a character and an event die and right now the shadow player is going to play a character die and he's going to move any and or all of his minions and or nazgul on the board so let's get to the board let's get him moving uh, his nazgul slash minions helms deep is the last holdout of the free peoples at the moment down in the south area here anyway he is going to move the Nazgul from Minas Morgul over to um, Helm's Deep. He's also going to move these Nazgul in here. Uh, four, five. He is then going to move... <laughs> Jeez, yeah, this is getting pretty silly. Um, he is then going to leave this Nazgul with this army here. No, he's not. He's going to move that one as well. Let me readjust the camera because he's going to be uh, moving this Nazgul somewhere. And he's also going to be moving the Witch King. All right, far away shot. So this Nazgul is going to fly all the way up here with the Southern Army. <clears throat> and the Witch King is also going to come over here with the Southern Army on the borders of Dale. Now Dale's worth one victory point. Uh, that's, yeah, not looking too great um <laughs> all right and that's the shadow player uh using a character die to move any or all of his nazgul including the witch king which can move he has infinite movement as well anywhere wow all right back we go to the final die for the free peoples uh gee i wonder what we're going to use that one for it's the final die for this turn for the free peoples and yes we're going to use strider's special ability which means he can use any free peoples die to hide the fellowship and man do we need them hidden they are on the mordor track and like i said they can't move on the mordor track unless they're hidden so let's go ahead and we're going to hide them all right so we are revealed at the moment but aragorn through his uh, tricks and whatever is able to once again hide the fellowship they're on the mordor track we have two corruption for frodo he gets 10 more we instantly lose the game as the free peoples i've now got a better feeling about our chances but man the powers of sauron and all his armies are getting absolutely nasty Ah, oh, it's gonna be so close i don't know we're gonna see what's gonna happen here uh, very shortly and the shadow player has three dice remaining a palantir or event die and two army muster dice he is going to play an event card oh i don't like the sound of this but that's what he's going to do so we're going to come back here i'm going to take a look at which uh, card he's going to play oh man say it isn't so he's playing dreadful spells it says play if a shadow army containing nazgul that would be at uh, helm's deep is adjacent to or in the same region as a free people's army okay that would be um he's going to be attacking the rohan unit well we'll see here in a second i'll show you roll a number of dice equal to the number of nazgul up to a maximum of five and score one hit for every result of five plus um uh, and yeah so what the shadow player is going to do is we're going to go over to rohan region <clears throat> and we're going to see where he's going to have those dreadful spells take effect all right so what the shadow player is going to do they're going to take the five nazgul here in the helms deep region and they are going to attack uh, wesmet here which has a leader or has an elite and three regulars so we're going to be rolling five dice for the five nazgul attacking this region so basically the nazgul fly out from helms deep attack those units in the field uh, they're gonna, we're going to be rolling five dice for because of the five Nazgul, and we're going to get one hit on every five plus. Ooh, that was nasty. Dreadful spells indeed. Well, it's five dice for the Shadow Player. A hit on each five plus, and they get... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, this 
this is unreal. Three sixes and two fives. That is five hits. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, let's go back to the board. Oh, my goodness. Five hits against the uh, Rohan. Oh, that was unbelievable. It is a bad day for the men of Rohan. Five hits against Westmet. That would be two for the Elite. Three, four, five. Absolutely devastated that entire army uh, of Rohan. Those are out of the game, never to be seen again, can't be recruited. All that's left is um, Gandalf the White, Mary, a leader, and two regulars now hold up in Helm's Deep. We have one elite, two regulars, two leaders in, um, where is this right now, Edoras. Oh man, that was absolutely crushingly horrible. we got to get the ring into the crack of doom. Oh man, that was just ridiculously awful. <laughs> okay, back again to the shadow player. Oh man, this is, this is awful. The shadow player has two dice remaining to muster armies. And what do they want to do? Well, they are going to use one die to do two army movements on the board. All right, which two armies are they going to move? I don't know. Let's find out. All right, and the two armies that the Shadow Player are going to move, they're going to move everything out of Minas Tirith, the rubble of Minas Tirith, which is, of course has been conquered. Uh, to here, five regulars, and they're going to move these two elite uh, over here into the Siege of Helm's Deep. <clears throat> All right, they still have, believe it or not, one die remaining. Wow. Uh, so let's get to their final action die for this uh, this round. Their final die is an army muster. What are they going to do? They are going to attack Helm's Deep with Gandalf the White. Mary, a leader, and two regulars. So let's take a look and see what kind of carnage may or may not happen there. Okay, so in Helm's Deep, we've got two elites, which act as leaders, because Sauron is on the board. Uh, five Nazgul, so they have a total leadership of seven. They have uh, four regular Urukai. So they basically have six units, they're going to be rolling five dice. Uh, the Free Peoples are only going to be rolling two dice, because they only have two units. But they are going to use um, Gandalf the White's ability. And his, he's the White Rider. If Gandalf the White's in battle, at the start of the battle, you can forfeit his leadership to negate all Nazgul leadership, including the Witch King. So basically, we're not going to use Gandalf's one reroll, but he's going to negate all five of the Nazgul. So he goes out with his beacon going, you know, uh, the power of the flame or Anduril, whatever the hell it was. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, so he negates the Nazgul, but he doesn't get a reroll. Mary will, though, and so will the leader. So they're going to be rolling two dice, two re-rolls. But now we have to figure out if uh, we as a free people are going to play a card or whether the shadow player is going to play a card. Oh, man, this is nasty. Well, we as the free people are going to play the Nameless Wood. Play if the defending army is in a Rohan region. It is. It's at Helm's Deep, Vanguard, or Thank. If your combat roll or leader re-roll score at least one hit, score two additional hits. So we get a little bit of help from the Ents. However, Shadow Player is also playing a card. They are playing Desperate Battle. Both armies add one to all dice on their combat roll and leader re-roll. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, so what that's going to mean is we're going to be rolling five dice for the Shadow Player. And they get, they're going to hit on a five or six. Uh, and we're going to be rolling two dice for the Free Peoples, and they're going to hit on a four, five, or six. Uh, and if the Free Peoples get at least one hit, they're going to do two extra hits. Oh man, let's get out the dice tray and pray that uh, Gandalf the White Mary uh, and the two regulars at Helm's Deep can hold off the horde of Saruman. All right, so we have Gandalf out there with his staff holding off all the Nazgul. They're not going to be able to re-roll, but the Shadow Player is going to get two re-rolls because they have the two Warg Riders uh, as leaders. And 
in Helm's Deep we have uh, Mary and the leader, so they're going to get two rerolls. So the, uh, like I said, the free peoples are going to hit on a four, five, or six. Shadow player is going to hit on a five or six, and that's going to include rerolls. Oh my God! Say good night, Gandalf. Uh, okay, well the free peoples do get two hits, uh, plus two hits, and the shadow player has three hits, and they get to reroll. They get two rerolls because of the board riders, and they only get three hits. But three hits, I think, is enough. Now the free peoples also get two extra hits because of the ants helping out in the battle. But you know what? That's not good. So it's four hits against the shadow player, three hits against the defenders of Helm's Deep. So let's take the shadow players off the board first. All right, four hits against the forces of Saruman. So we're going to take two for a Warg Rider. Uh, actually, we're going to take the two elites. That's going to be the four hits against Saruman. He still has four regulars and five Nazgul there. And now, yes, we go to the defenders of Helm's Deep and take three casualties. And here we are at the last stand at Helm's Deep. Three casualties, well, they only have two regular units, which means the defenders of Helm's Deep are crushed, killed, and no more. So yes, any companions and or leaders that are left alone in a defeated uh, army battle location also are killed. So sorry, Gandalf the White, you did your job holding off the Nazgul, but you are no longer in Middle Earth. You've gone to the Gladden or the fields uh, somewhere of light, and same as Mary. So Mary, Gandalf the White, are out of the game permanently for the rest of this game. Uh, wow, that was brutal. That's the end of the action dice. Uh, Helm's Deep has fallen. All right, Helm's Deep gives them two points. One, two, up to nine. Nine. They're one victory point away from uh, of crushing the free peoples. And unfortunately, when Gandalf the White goes away, so does his action die. He's dead out of the game. We remove his die. <clears throat> Darn it. Um, that's going to be the end of the turn. So if we, I'll check the time. And see if we're going to start up for the next round. Oh my god, all the Sauron units need is one more victory point. Ouch, could be brutal. And so I'm going to leave it off there for today. Uh, we're close to the 20 minute mark. Oh man, that was brutal. That uh, attack by the Nazgul at Westmet absolutely decimated the uh, Rohirrim, absolutely wiping them out. We have Edoras worth one point with one uh, leader or two leaders, one elite, two regulars. Also up in the north, we have Dale with three regulars, one leader, and a mass. We get the Witch King, a Nazgul. We have an elite, two, four, and five regular units right on the doorstep. Ooh, yep, yeah. things uh, things looking extremely desperate <laughs> for the free peoples, Arr! but. We do have Frodo and Sam on the uh, track to uh, toss the ring into uh, Mount Doom. So it's, uh, is it possible? I don't know. There are so many um, dice for the Shadow Player. It is likely that he will crush us, but you, you don't know. You'll have to come back in the next episode or two to find out. So thanks so much for watching along. This is War of the Ring 2nd Edition. It's looking ever more likely that the forces of shadow are going to have a military victory but i'm not holding out uh, i'm holding out some hope yet for frodo sam uh aragorn boromir and legolas are now in uh, on the track to destroy the ring so uh, we'll see what happens so thanks so much and we'll see you in the next episode